Jaegers, Kaiju, and more are available at Big Bad Toy Store, so check out the link in the description down below. Kaiju, Dragon Ball, Pokemon, and more. It's Steven's Toy Reviews. Why, hello there, collectors. It is Steven here once again, and we are continuing the Pacific Rim Uprising figure reviews. Staying with the robot spirits from Tamashi Nations, this time we have Bracer Phoenix. So this one has actually been called pretty generic by the fandom because, let's be honest, it's a big, stocky robot, right? And we've seen that design in a particular football promo before, if you're paying attention to what's going on in sports. And yeah, it kind of looks like a generic robot, a boxer mech. But given the source material is Pacific Rim, there has to be something very unique about this Jaeger that is going to transition really well into action figure format, right? Well, Bandai did it as much justice as they can, and at about 30 bucks, is it worth the price of admission? Let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. So to be perfectly honest with Bracer Phoenix, there are a couple of areas that look really nice when it comes to things like the decal work, and what paint is there is very nice and clean. The sculpt as well is awesome, just like Gypsy Avenger. However, this so far of the first initial three Jaegers anyway, Bracer Phoenix is probably the most bland. Not necessarily in design, but in the bear tan plastic yeah unfortunately there isn't a whole lot of detailing beyond the sculpt and the decal work so if you have your hopes up for a highly detailed bracer phoenix unfortunately this is not going to be the one that you're going to want to add into your collection but still bandai did a nice job where they actually did put in the effort so let's take a closer look the con pod has some very nice paintwork to it. We do have brown, what are essentially eyebrows. And then the actual con pod in and of itself, the visor, is a nice gold coloration. Note that there isn't any sort of light trick you can do here like you could do with Gypsy Avenger to sort of make it seem like it was translucent plastic. Just going to be gold paint here. The shoulder pads are really neat because we do have some nice decal application here. We are going to have a couple of digits here and there, but what's interesting on Bracer's right shoulder, that would be our left, there is some lettering. What does it say? I don't know. It's very, very tiny and the letters are all running together. So if someone does happen to know what it is, please post it in the comments down below because I would really love to know. As we continue to look down Bracer Phoenix here, we do see more decal work on the chest on the right side, which is very nice. And on the middle, we can see where those guns are going to be stored at that you'll see in the accessory section later. And we can actually see the cockpit where another Ranger, that would be the technical name for a Jaeger pilot, would sit in. So that's great to see here on the front. On the back, as you'll notice, uh, not necessarily the case. Just below that, we do have some nice silver plastic that blends in well with the metallic look for Bracer Phoenix. Moving on down, we do have a couple of decals on the thighs for the yellow lines, which is cool. And on the left thigh of Bracer, we are going to have some artillery units. So Bracer is going to be able to fire off some form of rockets from its legs. Moving on down even more, we do have the multiple hinge design of the legs, which does look very, very neat, but it's pretty much just bare plastic here all the way down to the feet. Nice sculpt, but really there's no weathering, there's no damage, nothing of the sort. Moving on to the back of Bracer Phoenix, again like Gypsy Avenger and even the Bandai Boys Division vinyls, Bandai here took the idea of if you can't see it from the front, don't worry about paying attention to the details. Because even the back cockpit where we would have some of the hidden guns, it's completely bare tan plastic. There's no shading, there's no weathering, no decal work whatsoever, which is pretty disappointing. To wrap everything up, we're going to take a look at Bracer's arms. And as you can see for the right arm, it's pretty straightforward. It looks like a general mech arm. Nothing too, too fancy here. But the left arm is a heavy arms version, right? Because <laughs> heavy arms... Kiryu. Anyway, on the forearm, we're going to have a couple of cannons there, which is really, really neat. No detailing to them on the trailers. They do kind of look silver. But what is the real star of the show on the left arm is going to be the brass knuckles on that left hand. Yeah, that is really, really cool. That glove there with the knuckles. Oh, that is so cool. It's nice to see we do have a boxing Jaeger this time around, just like we had with Cherno Alpha. So all in all, I think what work they did put into Bracer Phoenix looks nice, but 
there really isn't a whole lot there to begin with. For articulation, Bracer Phoenix is really nice. It does use all of the other joints that the Jaegers use. So if you know how to work the shoulder joints, the hip joints, the knee joints, whatever, you know how the articulation works. Unfortunately, there are a couple of drawbacks, both due to joint quality on this one. Maybe it's just mine, who knows? And uh, the design that don't necessarily lend it too well to an articulated figure, but at the end of the day, it is still very fun. What do we have? We do have the head, which attaches into the neck on a ball joint. Now, it does use the same style of ball joint system that uh, Gypsy Avenger uses. So if you're familiar with that one, there is another piece in there that the head attaches to that you can kind of wiggle around. But unfortunately, because of where the head is located, this is about as much movement as you're going to get moving around. Yeah. So the shoulder pads, they are on ball joints as well. So you can move them around just like so which is really cool. And then for the shoulder joints, they actually, like I said, use the same system that Gypsy Avenger uses. So we do have a ball joint where the shoulders connect into the body. So you can really move the arms back like so. Or if you twist and turn them around, you can move them up, all that fun stuff, which is really good. And then the arms are on ball joints as well. So that's something you can do if you want. So yeah, so where the arms plug in, the shoulders, that's a ball joint and swivel combo. And then the shoulders, where they plug in, that's also a ball joint. We also have bicep swivels, which is really cool. It's the basic, but it's still cool to see. We do have double hinges, so this way you can really raise the arms up like that. And for the wrists, ball joints, but unfortunately, they're really, really loose. So yeah, that's no fun. That's never fun to see there. So good range of movement for the arms. Where it's not so good a range of movement is from there down. We do have a waist joint, uh, but unfortunately it's kind of blocked due to the sculpt of the Jaeger here. Can wiggle back and forth. Yeah, so eh, it kind of works. The hips, uh, the pelvis area, it does have that ball joint in it that's kind of awkward so this way you can push that portion to left right forward back a little bit twist and turn it if you'd like uh, i don't really have a whole lot of success here with this one in doing that but it can be done hips ball joint so really really big swinging leg motion forward and back out to the side not really because we do have these spikes up here and then once again we do have the ball joints where they plug into the thigh for the knees, uh, we do have four hinges. We have one here, one here, another one there, and another one here in the shin. So one, two, three, four. So we can do stuff like that, make the leg go out really far. Uh, which one was it? I think it was this one. I think it was that one. The sculpt actually popped off. I popped it back in. Not a big deal. But uh, yeah, so eh, it kind of works. But it's not fluid movement. And yeah, I don't know. It's just not very movable, even though we do have plenty of joints. It's just kind of like you can either extend the leg or you can retract the leg. It's not very, very intricate like some of the other Jaegers that you would just have, oh, straightforward double hinge system. No, not really how it works. And then we do have that ankle ball joint, double access. So this way we get tons of movement there. Unfortunately, no toe hinge. So overall for this big ball, lug i would have to say the articulation is serviceable if you really want to have a brawler jaeger so bracer phoenix is definitely going to be the guy on your shelf who's going to be knocking around some kaiju the articulation is solid if you're creative with your displays but overall i do think that it could be improved just a little bit even if it is putting a little bit more work into the design for accessories, Bracer Phoenix is actually pretty light compared to something like Gypsy Avenger that came with a whole bunch of accessories. For Bracer Phoenix, we do have the default fist, but we also have splayed hands. Along with that, we do have the front gun and the back gun. So, yeah, that is about it. That's all we're getting. There's no extra effect part to simulate like a muzzle flare or whatnot. This is pretty much it. But uh, again, for the price, I guess that is within the realm of of acceptable right right because it's only 30 bucks so how does everything work well for the hands you already know how that works you can just go ahead and pop those off mine's really really easy peasy once again similar to gypsy avenger it's not a straightforward splayed hand it's more like an open palm so let's see if we can get that popped in there these hands seem to want to stay in a little better which is good to see So yeah, that hole is actually on the back of the hand. So if you wanted to, 
have a more so splayed hand experience. Eh, we kind of get it here, not too, too much. And then we do have the cannons, which you just pop that front part off. And then paying attention to the sculpted details, you just plug it in just like so on the front. So that looks really nice. The detail there is actually pretty intense for the size. We can actually see lines in the barrels. And then we can actually see that little mini cockpit where someone is going to climb on down in there and actually fire off at the kaiju. Then on the back, you just remove this part here, which can be a pain to get to because of the way that the sculpt is, which actually isn't saying too many bad things it's just difficult to get to lots of sculpted detail and small parts and then for the rear cannon or rear cannons rear guns whatever you want to call them ah, there we go that's how we get those bad boys in there and once again we do have some fantastic detailing there where we can also see the cockpit where the Jaeger pilot would go the technical term for that is ranger kids and then we do have some nice detailing for the barrels once more now, something interesting about Robot Spirits figures is that they actually sort of have a built-in support stand function. And let's see if I can just make this nice and easy. Well, most of them do anyway. Ah, there we go. So that little piece was a pain to pull out. But there we go. We do have that removed. And now we have a hole there. And that hole is compatible with pretty much all Tamashi stage support arms. So if for whatever reason you needed Bracer Phoenix to be held up by a stand, we do have that option for you. Because it's such a larger figure, I would suggest sticking with fives because just one little bump, the whole thing falls over. So overall for accessories, having not seen Uprising so far, I think everything that we get is fitting for the character. And it's definitely enough to have a very nice display up on your shelf. I mean, this is definitely a brawler Jaeger. It's going to be able to knock some kaiju around. But at the same time, I feel like something small like an explosion effect would have really gone the extra mile. And if you're looking to get an explosion effect and you don't necessarily have a specific brand in mind for where you're going to be going, click on the card in the top right hand corner of your screen and I'll help you find the effect parts that you need today. Yeah, I keep showing that video every chance that I get because, hey, it's helpful for everyone and I think people are going to like it if they haven't seen it so far. Now to wrap up the review, here is a size comparison with Bracer Phoenix with the first round of Jaegers released by Tamashii Nations. And as you can see, it is definitely going to be a smaller Jaeger, but at the same time, it's going to fit in relatively well with the other Pacific Rim figures you just might have up on your shelf already, and it's going to brawl very nicely with your SH Monster Arts. So congratulations, we now have more stuff for Godzilla to fight. So, buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. I gotta be honest with you here, I think Bracer Phoenix is the weakest of the initial launch trio from Tamashi Nations in the Robot Spirits line. The articulation is serviceable if you know how to work joints, then chances are you're gonna be able to get Bracer into a whole bunch of fun poses. The accessories are just the bare minimum to get you over the hump, and you can always throw in some extra effect parts to really liven up your display, but for looks, 30 bucks, whole bunch of missing details, half of the figure isn't even painted or even touched with a decal, and realistically speaking, what they did add in is very minor. We have a total of about 10 decals, including all of the individual ones on the shoulders. Not a whole lot of work went into making this guy look good, which is a shame at the end of the day, but still. Overall, though, if you accept it for what it is, I don't really think that Bracer Phoenix is that bad of an action figure. It'll look nice up on your shelf. However, if you're not attracted to the design and you're not going to hedge your bets just yet on Pacific Rim Uprising being a smash hit at the box office, then you know what? Bracer Phoenix may just be a Jaeger that is pretty safe to pass on. Also, something else of note, at one point in the movie, we know for a fact that Bracer Phoenix does end up with a Morningstar, so I wouldn't be surprised if at some point we do get a deluxe set or another Bracer Phoenix release down the line, so it might just be worth saving your money for that. Well, folks, that's the end of this review. Thanks for watching, and be sure to follow me on social media to catch more behind-the-scenes shenanigans and updates. The end card should be popping up now with more hand-selected STR goodness for you to watch, so check out some of those videos. Be sure to check the description too to see where you can buy this figure or others like it and some cool links like the credits for this video and other ways you can help out the channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch ya in the next video.